of the handful of programming principles that I live by, the open-close principle is perhaps the most important. I consider the open-close principle to be a central goal for all software development and what we should be striving for when we do development beyond just getting our code to work. Let's dive in. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein. The open close principle says that methods, classes, modules, or other entities should be open for extension, but closed for modification. So what does this mean? It basically is saying that we want to build code in such a way that we don't need to change it very often. When I ask developers why they would rather write a new feature than to take an existing feature and modify it, they respond that they'd rather write the new feature, generally. When I ask why, they give me all sorts of examples. It's more fun to implement something new. The existing system might be difficult to understand or poorly written. Integration is typically where the nastiest bugs show up. It's true that bugs are more prevalent when we modify existing code than when we write new code. If it's the case that it is safer to write new code than to change existing code, and that developers prefer to write new code over changing existing code, why not set ourselves up for success? After all, we're the developers and we can create code any way we want. This is exactly what the open close principle is saying. Of course, it would be wonderful if I moved from version one to version two of a product and it only required to add new code and not change any existing code, but that's not ever the case. So the question really becomes, how to minimize changing existing code and maximize writing new code. Ideally, for any new feature or changing an existing feature, I would rather change code in only one place and then add new code. This is what the open close principle really means to me. If I can add new features by simply adding new code and perhaps updating a factory, then I consider my design to be open for extension. This is the question that I ask over and over again in design reviews and code reviews and to myself, which is how open closed is this design? And by that, what I mean is how open is this design for extension and where is it closed for modification? Understanding the strengths and weaknesses of each design that we come up with is, I think, a critical aspect of good software development. It saves us from getting into trouble later. Adding new features should always require minimal changes to existing code. And when we think of building software in this way, it really, to me, changes the dynamic of, of what I consider important. I try to write code now in such a way that I'm always building on myself rather than tearing things down and reconstructing things. This is the way nature works. Nature builds upon itself. If you look at ecology, if you look at species, if you look at anatomy, what we find is that systems build upon each other. And this is how we get complexity. This is how we emerge a design rather than trying to come up with it mechanically from our head. And, and it's a very different way of thinking and an incredibly powerful way of doing design. I've done this many times before. I've helped many other developers do this. And I'm always astounded by the quality of, of what we come up with, by the sheer elegance of the solution. There are techniques that help me do emergent design. One of the most powerful techniques, well, two of them, that I keep in my pocket all the time are design patterns and test-first development. We'll be focusing a lot on these two disciplines, really, because they're more than just techniques. They're bodies of knowledge that I feel are so vital for software developers, and I don't see a lot of developers really understanding it. So we're going to focus on it in this channel, and we're going to focus on really the, the, the key aspects of, of building good software. You know, there are principles in software development. They're not very well known in our industry, but there are principles like the open close principle, like the single responsibility principle. And these are so important for really taking our understanding of what software is and how to build it well to another level. It's not just a series of instructions. It's aggregating ideas together. It is as intricate as thought itself, because that's what it is. It's modeling thought. It's very, very powerful. When we think about building software in this way, it has a huge impact on our approach. 
we suddenly see that there are different ways to extend behavior. For example, we may want to add a new variation to an existing system, such as a new form of encryption. We may want to change the sequence of steps in an algorithm, or we want to maybe change the number of steps that we follow. These are all variations. If we are able to encapsulate these kinds of changes so that when we need to make changes to them later, we can without affecting the rest of the system, then we say we are open for change. Following the open-close principle, we're forced to write code that's more cohesive, less redundant, and overall of higher quality. Open closeness is one of the keys for me for writing great software. If you found this helpful, then please like and subscribe because I got lots more to share. <laughs> and until next time, happy coding.